let's take a look at the process of creating a badge from the uh, instructor or teacher point of view. I'm logged in as an instructor here and I have uh, instructor access to the test course so we're going to go into there and you can see that I've copied the quiz that I used in the uh, previous example from the student viewpoint to use to set up a new badge and attach it to this quiz as a requirement. So we're going to go over here under course administration and click on badges. You can see we can manage badges to look at what we have as an existing badge and here is this badge. But we're going to go and create a new badge. So I click add a new badge and I give it a uh, name and the description goes in here and of course with a uh, serious badge we would have a reasonable description in there. Now we're going to choose our image file for the badge so I click choose file. I'm going to browse my computer and we're going to locate the new badge that we want to add and upload it. And now we put in the issuer name which in this instance would be Cornell Cooperative Extension and the instructor contact information which we'll just use my email address for. Okay, now we can set an expiration for the badge if this is uh, something that is got a limited life, a limited term, we can certainly do that. Um, but we're going to leave it as an infinite badge that follows you to the grave. So we're going to click Create Badge. And you can see if we look at our overview, this is our description. Here's all the information we put in. Now, you can see that we don't have any criteria for the badge, so there's no way for a uh, learner to earn this badge. So we want to go in and set up some criteria. And you can see in the Add Badge criteria we have a drop down here. I have it automatically generated like you would do with a certificate at the end of a course. But we're going to pin this to an activity. So we're going to do Activity Completion. And we're going to select the quiz that we just cloned, the Sigmund's quiz. And we're not putting a completion date in there, but we could say it has to be complete by a certain day otherwise the badge is not valid. Uh, and then you can you can select of course multiple um, activities to lead to a aggregate and then the completion of the badge. But in this case for our example we're just going to select the one quiz and we're going to save that. So now we've created a badge, we've put our details in there, we've attached it to the completion of a quiz and of course we can customize the message that's in here if we would like to and have it auto notify us uh, every time it's awarded. And then of course if this were a badge that we're currently running we could look at our recipients and see who has earned that badge but nobody has earned it because it's not available. So now we need to click enable access and of course the system goes through and checks and see if anybody has completed that quiz to earn the badge uh, but because we've just set the quiz up and initiated the badge and nobody has earned it yet. So now if we go back to our course we now have a quiz that has a badge attached to it when there is successful completion. And again for the learner that process would look like what we illustrated in the prior screencast. Uh, the learner would take the quiz and successfully complete it and be automatically awarded the badge. And that is the process of uh, working with badges from the instructor point of view. You can see that it's a fairly straightforward process and uh, the only real things to be aware of is, is the activity completion. You, you need to have that turned on and uh, then you tie your badge to a, an activity otherwise there's no real connection that I could find between the two. So if you don't have that setting enabled you have to have your administrator enable that setting. Uh, then you're up and ready to go with badges. Um, and again, here we are looking at both badges that are available for this course. So again, here you're in a situation where you could have a longer course with a series of micro badges leading up to a course completion certificate or a, a larger, more meaningful badge that sort of encapsulates all the knowledge that's learned through the different units. Uh, there are any number of things you could do with this. Um, there are really interesting situations, I think, where you could have uh, offline activities and, and engagement that happens and then bring people online to again in a situation like this uh, go through a quiz or some sort of assessment process and generate the badge 
which signifies learning that happened outside of the online world but is brought into and validated through an assessment tool online. So this is a really exciting development for Moodle. It's a really exciting development for badges. And it'll be really interesting to see where this goes. Hopefully, this has given you just a quick overview of what the process looks like for the instructor in creating the badge. Uh, when we get into some serious usages, we can start talking about those, documenting those. But for today, that's all I wanted to cover, so thank you very much. Mm -hmm.